How's it going? It's Janie over here at Janie Sweets. Welcome back to another Friday Fixes episode where you ask me your kid questions and I do my best to answer them for you. Today's episode is super special because I have a guest with me. We're going to be talking all about photography. How do you take those really nice, beautiful pictures of your cakes and desserts so that they stand out? So Monique, do you want to introduce yourself? Absolutely. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Monique. I am with Gotta Have Cake where I teach bakers and treat makers how to take beautiful, outstanding photos of their desserts so that their pictures better represent the accuracy of, the, of their work. As you guys see, you should totally check out Monique's Instagram. She has amazing, amazing tips for you guys. In today's episode, she's gonna be sharing a couple of them with us, but let's talk about a little bit of your backstory, Monique. What inspired you? What made you get into what you're doing, which is taking beautiful cake photography? So my journey started with uh, my, my business. I have another business called Mini Maggie's Desserts. Um, where I typically do like southern style baking, um, southern style cakes, and that business, Mini Maggie's Desserts, was named after my late grandmother, Maggie. She was the baker of the family, but she never actually took her baking passion to the next level, so in her honor, um, I decided to create the business after her Mini Maggie's Desserts. But what happened was, I was starting to, to get a lot of uh, questions through DM. People were saying, oh my God, this is beautiful. Who's doing your photography? And I'm like, uh, I, I'm doing my own photography. And they say, oh my God, you gotta teach me. How do you do this? How do you do that? And so I was like, okay, well, this is something that maybe there's a niche there. So maybe I should look into this. Wow, this is absolutely great. I love the fact that out of you know people starting asking you questions this is when you started actually doing this you know like teaching people because that's exactly how Janie Sweet started as well like I just was doing things and then people were asking me how do you how do you how do you and then now I'm teaching so this is great I think that experience is the best teacher so you guys are gonna be in for a treat because she has a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge that she's gonna share with us so let's get started with a couple of questions because I know you guys are burning to know what would you say are the top three mistakes that you find people make whenever they're taking pictures of their cakes or desserts. One of the top three mistakes that I do notice that a lot of bakers and treat makers make is that they are not planning for their photography. So what happens is you you are excited, you get this order, you plan for how you know when you're gonna bake day, when you're gonna make your buttercream day, when you're gonna make all your fondant accent pieces or even make home, homemade your fondant, uh, when you're gonna to uh, crumb coat and assemble everything together. But towards the end, you're rushing to get the photo because maybe the clients are on their way to come and pick up their cake. Maybe you work a full-time job like most of us do. Maybe you're, you know, you're a home, you're a home mom or a home dad, and you, you do other things outside of baking. So towards the end, you really don't include that planning part as, uh, as one of your items that you do for your desserts. The second mistake that I know is that simply Simply, people just don't know what to do or how to take a photo. Uh, again, times crunch time. So you are in there, you know, you're baking your cake and then you just want to snap the photo and just get the cake out the door, or get the cupcakes or whatever type of treat you're making. And then the third thing that I noticed is that towards the end, even if you do a beautiful photo or just some type of photo, at the end, you're not taking time to properly edit the photo. My students in my dessert photography course can tell you that editing for me and what I teach my students is one of the most important aspects of taking your photos. You must take time to edit your photos. Wow, that's so interesting. You know, the first point that you um, put out there is definitely what I struggle with. I didn't even think it was a thing, you know, like you just kind of take the picture just like, oh, real quick. I didn't think, oh yeah, this has to be a part of the planning. This has to be a part of, you know, what I do now. You know what? This is why I like talking to you guys. Like, you <laughs> have my pleasure. And, insight. and you know, I, I say this too. I've been there. I mean, I, I started the, the same thing that I'm saying to the audience here. I've done plenty of times in the past. And what it comes to is that I'm like, okay, this is a beautiful cake, man, but this photo is, ooh. So then I said, okay, what do I need to do? Let me reevaluate my whole process. Cause I do, I plan for what ingredients that I need to go shopping for. I plan for what day I'm gonna bake, how I'm gonna make, how and when I'm gonna make my buttercream. 
all of this stuff is planned but then i realized towards the end it's, it's just as simple as oh my gosh all right boom done i got my photo but then i go and look at my photo like oh i really don't want to post this on social media or on my website because this ew, look at that shadow it's oh gosh if only i had taken the time so then i start to say okay if I'm putting so much effort into creating this beautiful cake, if I'm doing all of these things, then I need to also schedule time to take beautiful photos. With some time constraints, I do realize that maybe, you know, when we're creating our desserts, stuff happens. Our original plan for the cake design really don't happen that way sometimes. And so I, I, I totally get it. Things happen and not all the time you can get the best photo. But in my dessert photography course, I do teach you if if you have to take your photos inside the cake box, it's a pet peeve of mine. But if if you do, there's a way that you can still get the cake that's inside the box. And during the editing portion, I show my students how to crop the, the box. But there's a certain way that you must take the cake at a certain angle in order to make it appear that the cake is not taken inside of the box. Wow, wow. I feel like there's so much great information, like valuable information in that course. Well, we're gonna get to it in a second because like, what? You can take a picture inside of the box and it not look like you took it inside of the box? I think that's awesome. So we're definitely gonna touch base on that on the class later on. But let's talk about misconception because I find a lot of times that people tell me like, oh, Janie, like how did you, you know, like I wish I could take nice pictures but I don't have like a nice camera or I don't have um, you know like a nice background or something like that or they ask me like what camera do you use and I'm like my phone or you know like just a regular DSLR and they're like what it, I thought it was more expensive so let's talk a little bit about that um, what are some misconceptions that you find sure so some of the some of the major misconception is that you have to have the $1,000 and above expensive camera digital camera you have to have like all of the cake stands and all of the props and all of the backdrops and you have to have natural light and you cannot take a photo at nighttime. So it's a lot of things that I've experienced, especially working with some of my students that they come across and I'm saying, well, hey, have you thought about it this way? And they're like, bing, oh, okay, okay. I didn't think about it that way. So no, and the reason why I decided to teach the dessert photography course because everyone has access to a cell phone more than they do a digital camera. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I figured I started with my cell phone and I and I improved on my skills and techniques on how to get a beautiful beautiful photo with my cell phone. So why not teach a course on how to get beautiful photos using your smartphone? It doesn't matter if you have an iPhone or an Android or any other type of phone. You just need one of the later models a tabletop, a backdrop, this is plain as white or black. I also like a charcoal gray color backdrops. You need either natural light or some soft boxes if you do photography at nighttime. There were different kind of categories for when people take their photo. Most people take with natural light, but what happens if I am getting off at 6 p.m. in the evening, I have to come home and cook dinner, make sure that the kids are fed, make sure they get a bath, make sure they get their books and stuff ready for the next day. Then after that, I have time to bake. And then after that, I have time to take photography, photos. But it's nighttime. When and how do I achieve that? And there is a way to do that. And, and that is one of the courses that I teach. So I give the option for people to either choose natural light photography or photography at nighttime, which is using your softbox. I'm so excited about this. Like now I'm going to have to take that course because I definitely, I don't take pictures at night for that reason. I don't know how to, I have like all the different lightings in the world, but I still cannot get like the perfect picture. It always has like a weird shadow or it looks weird. The colors off. Like even if you look at like the videos that I put out, like I will always, always take like a still shot or something in the day because it, I, I don't know how to do that. So I'm super excited about that. <laughs> now, the one thing that always bugs me, right, are the obvious, you know, mistakes that people make. You know, like when I say obvious, not to offend anybody, maybe it's obvious to me, but not obvious to other people. Like, you know, having like your dishes in the background of the picture or, you know, crazy mistakes like that. 
but there is a picture that you posted on your Instagram around Valentine's Day um, and you said can you spot the mistakes in the picture? And I was like, what is she talking about? What mistakes? <laughs> this picture is perfect. Like, what are you talking about? And then a couple days later, you circled the mistakes and I was like, what? I would have never thought about this. Like, I, not one, I didn't get one right. Did anyone actually find out what was, like, did anyone get any of them right? <laughs> you know what? They. One of my students, she yeah. actually got four of the six that I spotted. Yeah. And her comment was, this is great, but this is scary because now I'm thinking like you, Monique. And I'm like, well, that's, that's good. That's why you pay to be in the dessert photography course so you can catch these things with your photos. I said, so don't be mad, be glad. And she was like, but this is scary. I said, no, it, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. So... I want you to give the audience a sneak peek of your expertise so they can see that you know what you're talking about because your eye for attention to detail is like phenomenal. So I'm going to put up the picture right there and you guys are going to have a couple of seconds. If you need to pause this video, go ahead and pause the video and tell me if you can find spot the mistakes. How many mistakes were there? At least six, but more. Yes. <laughs> okay. So you guys tell me if you can spot the six mistakes, go ahead, pause the video right now. Okay, now if you have spotted all of these mistakes, you congratulations, you're a connoisseur. Connoisseur, I don't know how you say it. You know your stuff. <laughs> but we're gonna go back to Monique and she's gonna tell us everything that was wrong with the picture. Sure, absolutely. So this was a fun project or a fun exercise for me. I was going to post this picture for Valentine's Day, but as I was, of course, editing is my favorite module or my favorite part of photography, I was looking at this photo and was like, oh my gosh, I did exactly what I teach my students not to do. And I can't believe I did this. And then I said, wait, but this could be a great exercise for my followers and for my students to see if they can spot some of the mistakes that I was seeing. Granted, I was looking with a very critical eye because I've been doing photography specifically for, for, dirt, for, for desserts for about four years. And so after a while, little things you start to nitpick on. And I know I was just nitpicking. The photo is good enough to, 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 to show and publish on social media, but I was like, no, I can still fine tune this photo. So here we are with this photo of this uh, a cake jar, chocolate cake jars. And this is what I showed to social media. And, and to my students, I said, hey, there's about six things wrong with this photo. Can you spot them? And I said, I'll give you two days. And then after the two days went by, here's the big reveal. Here are at least seven things that were spotted that is wrong. Pay close attention to the images. First, we have number one. That green circle shows there's glitter on the lid. Now to the naked eye or to the normal eye that's not trained, probably didn't even see that. But as I was editing this photo, I said, oh my gosh, how did I like not clean that off? Because I teach my students, make sure you check around your scene before you snap the photo. I totally did not see that glitter. And, and, and it, the glitter honestly probably fell off as I was placing the bear down. So I didn't think to go and re recheck and make sure that everything was still okay with the photo. Number two, now this may, is this nitpicking, but number two shows there's a speck of chocolate crumb in the buttercream. Uh, that, that would drive me crazy just, just because uh, of my, my, my trained eye. I like, I immediately saw that speck and I was like, no, that speck is not supposed to be there. The third item is there is also smudge of buttercream on the chocolate cake. And if I want my images to be consistent, what I should have done was before I in, before I placed that chocolate cake layer inside of the jar, I should have made sure that the jar itself was clear and clean of any buttercream or any smudges. And then I'll layer the cake. So I didn't do that. Number four, um, 
I, I teach, so there's two things with number four actually. Number one is that I have my overhead lights on and you can kind of see the, 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 the sparkle of, the, of my kitchen lights shining on the jar. You can see that. And also what people thought in my comments on Instagram and Facebook was that they thought the, the jar itself was cracked, but it wasn't cracked. What, what, what it was was residue left over from a hot glue gun. So as I glued the bear onto the jar, you know, sometimes when you glue hot glue things and then you, get, you have that pool of hot glue string that comes out sometimes. Well, it came out and it wrapped itself around the jar and I didn't even catch that. So that's exactly what that is. That's not a crack, that's actually hot glue. And then at item number five, I am using a, a reflector tabletop. And on the tabletop, it's, it's, it's a reflector. So it's going to show like just the little particles, dust particles, crumb particles, anything. And what I have circled is I have a few crumbs that's on the mirror, on the reflector. Item number six is the same thing as item number three. There's some buttercream that I should have uh, taken off on the jar itself but i didn't and then number seven and i must be honest one of my students pointed this out to me she said hey that item on number seven the ribbon is not centered and i'm saying what, what, what is she talking about so i go and look and i'm like oh yeah that ribbon is definitely not centered on the lid and then a bonus is which is which, which would be no, item number eight the jars itself the jar on the very right in the back right corner should probably come over just a tad bit to the right hand side so that everything is balanced in the photo so there's yeah there's a couple of things that are uh <laughs> that are spotted in this photo but in general just to publish a photo most people probably won't catch that I, even as you're telling me that it's wrong like, I still don't, can't see until you're like, yeah, so this is like, I'm like, oh, okay. So for you to look at this picture and find seven, actually eight things that were wrong, like, this is amazing. And if your students can come out of your course actually trained to catch these mistakes, like, wow, this is, this is great. Is it extreme nitpicking? Absolutely. Why? Because our photo represents our brand. It represents our work. If this was a regular order that I didn't have to take photos of, because I recommend always get at least one excellent photo of your desserts, whether it's chocolate cake, red velvet cake, vanilla cake, uh, pretzel rods, a decorative pretzel rods, sugar cookies, make sure you always get a great photo so that you at least have one of everything that is really great so that you can continue to push that out for your marketing material. But for this purpose, I've never made cake jars. So this is my very first time making a cake jar. And I was gonna use this photo as advertisement for Valentine's Day, but I can't advertise this because of what I see. And if, now if I had to package the, these, these cake jars without taking a photo, although I still want my work to be top notch for my clients, but I wouldn't really nitpick about that one speck of buttercream, uh, one speck of cake in the buttercream. I, I would definitely give it to the, the client, but for, for, for purposes, for photography, for advertising, you want to make sure everything is crisp and clean. Now that, and again, that does not negate the fact that you're going to give your clients any other type of thing that looks any other type of way. You're not, you're still going to have a excellent presentation for your, for your customers. Mm -hmm. I love, love that you touch base on that because to be honest, I was, um, I, when you had posted that picture, I was showing my husband, I was like, what's wrong with this? He's like, nothing. I'm like, no, she said there's six things wrong with it. So there's six things wrong with it. He's like, yeah, cause it's not in my belly. He's like, nobody. So what he said <laughs> was, I'm so sorry, Jerry, I'm throwing you out under the bus here. But what he said is. Who cares like you're gonna eat it like if I am paying for it and I don't see anything wrong with it what why should I care or why should anyone care but I love that you said that it's not necessarily to give to your client but social media is your it's you have your own personal walking billboard that is being seen by millions of people hopefully you know potentially so if your stuff are like 
not perfect and pretty, you're missing out on a potential client. So I love that you said that you want to nitpick and be, you know, fussy about it when it comes time to taking pictures to post. But it's not necessarily that you wouldn't sell this because technically there really is nothing wrong with, you know, the product that you made, right? Absolutely. Yeah, you said it the best. You literally just explained it so perfectly. Like there was nothing wrong with that for sale, but for for, but for photo purposes, yeah, you want to clean that up just just a little bit. Perfect, perfect. All right, awesome. So everything that you've said to us is gold. Like if you guys didn't know that information, now you know. Um, what is the one thing that you would say coming out of this video that? everybody should do like it doesn't matter where you are if you're an advanced photographer if you you know your pictures are good or if you don't know how to even like hold the camera to take a picture what is the one piece of advice that you would have for our audience today you know the the cliche saying a picture is worth a thousand words so what i always tell my students as cliche as it is it is the absolute truth and i ask them what are your photo what are your photos saying is it saying oh my gosh if I'm on social media and I'm scrolling or I'm on my website and I'm looking for someone to make a cake for my daughter am I going to stop back up and say wow that's a beautiful cake wow where's she located I wonder if she could make my daughter's cake or is it something that kind of blends in with everybody else's uh, photo that doesn't really take time to represent their brand or their work or even their hobby um, even if you're a hobbyist, still produce beautiful work. Also, I would say that uh, definitely take time to edit your photos. Take time to, uh, everything doesn't have to be staged. Something as simple as a cake stand, your, your cake or your tray for cookies or anything like that. You don't need anything elaborate at all. Your smartphone, a nice backdrop, even if it's a foam board, either black foam board or a white foam board, but it's just something basic. You don't have to have all of the elaborate backdrops is basically what I'm saying. And just take your time and just get a great photo. And once you get that great photo, you have that photo to represent you long, long down the line. And if you are selling your desserts and your treats, I would recommend that you dedicate on one of your non-busy days to bake or make one of your most popular treats or desserts. For example, I always give this example and you probably heard it already if you follow me. But if you do red velvet, that's one of your top sellers. Take a day to bake your red velvet and you can also do content for Instagram or social media showing you how you make your, your red velvets. But for photography purposes, you can take that one item and make it look totally different so many different ways. For example, Valentine's Day, do a do a, a pipe your buttercream and add a red uh, fondant heart on it. Then we have Mother's Day, pipe pipe buttercream and put a, a like a rose. Roses are great for cakes. It doesn't it's not poisonous. Or you could do it for 4th of July. And, and again, we we still have these same cupcakes. We're just switching it out to make it look different. And for the entire year, you have content to show your audience based off of this one time that you baked and based off of this one time that you shot your photos. Fourth of July, red cupcake, white buttercream, put a blueberry on top, red, white, and blue. For Thanksgiving, add, uh, toasted pecans on top. For Christmas, um, do like a uh, something Christmassy, but I just list five things that you can take ahead of time based off of one day. One time you're baking, one time you're doing your photography, done. And I would recommend that for all of your flavors. For example, if you do chocolate, you could do, uh, if you have different offerings based off of the chocolate base, plan to have those photos taken on one day that you're not busy. Wow. Can we all petition for Monique to start her own YouTube channel? Because seriously, what? Okay, I'm totally stealing that tip. Yes. I, I tell you guys all the time, like when you're not busy, Go ahead and like make a cake, take a picture of it, like a wedding cake, something that you normally don't get orders for and that you would like to make. Go ahead and make it, you know, and then take a picture of it so that people can see that you can make that. But I didn't think that off of one time that you bake, 
you make cupcakes, you can change it up and have content for the rest of the year because sometimes I see people's Instagram and I'm like, how are they getting that many orders? Like every day they're posting, how is it possible? And I spoke to someone and she was like, oh, actually I made this cake like two years ago. I just like redecorated it and <laughs> I'm posting it now. I'm like, oh, nice. So this is perfect. Like not only do you get to like practice your photography skills, you know, you get to advertise that you can make the same dessert for different seasons. This is, this is amazing. These are gems. I hope you got your notebook and your pen and paper and you're writing these things down because Monique came to give us all, all, all the juice, all the tea. So I'm so excited that you stopped by today, Monique. Like, honestly, I couldn't deliver to you guys what Monique just did. Like, a lot of you guys have asked me how do I take my pictures? Honestly, I just wing it, and now you know how the professionals do it. And I want to take a second to talk about your business, Monique, and your class. Um, what can we expect? Like anything new that you plan on releasing for 2021? Any other classes that you've already released and planning on, you know, revamping? What's what's going on for your side of the business? Yes, it's so exciting. So, what's coming out for this year and beyond? For my current students, or even if you already know how to take beautiful photos, kudos, right? So, but for my current students and for anybody else who, who are interested, I am coming out with an advanced editing course. Cause now what I'm seeing is that, and the thing too, is that I want to teach what my audience is needing, not what I want to teach. So mm -hmm. what I'm hearing is that people are ready for now more advanced editing techniques and skills. So I'm coming out with a editing, photography editing course that's gonna show you how to use Lightroom. I will have a few presets for you to use. And also I'll be teaching on Snapseed. And so those are uh, more advanced techniques that will show you how to get better quality edits with your photography, with your photos. 98% um, of the time that I'm taking my photos and doing my editing, I'm in Lightroom. However, when I teach the, the, the dessert photography course, there is an editing portion inside of the course, but it's teaching you how to edit using your smartphone, the editor that comes standard on your smartphone. So that's the next course coming out. We are also going to touch on a little bit of Canva. Um, I am an affiliate with Canva, so that's very exciting. And what I, again, if it was up to me, I wouldn't teach it, but I, I can't just ignore what people are asking me. So they're saying, okay, well, now we want to learn how to take our beautiful photos and make beautiful flyers like you do. Like, what do you do? How do you do it? We need a course. I'm like, okay. So later on this year, we'll also be a course on how to create simple, beautiful, simple, beautiful flyers using using Canva and I will also be releasing in the near future uh, how to take photos with your digital camera because outside of the dessert photography course I do again 98% of my photography is using my digital camera so when I'm posting on social media or when I'm posting on my websites and everything I try to make sure that I mention this was taken with a smartphone or this is taken with my digital camera. So I won't confuse people with the different, you know, with the two. So I definitely try to make it a habit that I state what was used to, to achieve this photo. Um, I'm also, again, I'm getting a lot of feedback. People say, okay, well, I do cakes, but I also do food and I also do products like t-shirts and tumblers and mugs. How can I take photos of those? So I hear you. And so later on, maybe this year, early next year, we'll be diving into more of the food photography portion of things. Um, for me, this is my opinion, but I see that this that's a totally different realm, um, totally, totally different techniques, uh, composition, angles and everything. And with food photography, you have to uh, and some items, for example, for pizza, you want to make sure that pizza is freshly hot out of the oven. So if you do like a pulled cheese scene, it looks hot. There's different elements that you can add to make it look smoking hot. And so mm. it's a whole nother beast, but I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. And those requests are not uh, going ignored at all. 
Wonderful, wow. The, you are gonna be busy, busy, busy in 2021. <laughs> but that's exciting. Busy is good, busy is great. So I'm so, so excited. You guys, I'm gonna leave all of Monique's information down below, how you can register for her courses, her Instagram handle, everything, everything, how you can reach out to her. Um, so I will leave everything for you guys down in the comment section, but not the comment section. <laughs> the description box below. I'll leave everything down for you guys below. I'm so excited that you stopped by Monique. I'm thrilled that I was able to, you know, reach out to you and that you accepted. That was very humbling to me. Thank you so much for having me to interview me. Um, I would greatly appreciate it for this opportunity and also to talk to your audience. And as my gift to you and your viewers, I want to give you 15% off of the dessert photography course by using the code Jenny Sweets. Again, she will have all of that information located below. Hey, I was not expecting Monique to do that. This is amazing. You guys, if this was your push to go ahead and grab her classes, this is it. You have no excuse now to not have nice banging photos for your desserts. So thank you so much, Monique. I really appreciate that and I'm sure the audience does as well. So you guys, this is this week's video. Again, Monique's information is going to be down below and I will see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and let me know in the comment section below what you want to see from me next time. So I will see you in next week's video, guys. Love you. Talk to you later.